Gary Mack, I'm doing videos for my YouTube channel. Can I do a freestyle rap for you guys real quick? Then let's go. Okay, here we are. This is a fun one. This is one that we've been, uh, I've been wanting to do for a while. Mr. Oh, Gary Mack. Dope, man. Hey, it's William. Pleasure, nice to meet you, man. And here we are in your little space. Give us a little rundown. Where, where are we right now? What does this place mean to you? This is, uh, so this is my podcast studio. Cool. But um, before it was my podcast studio, it was also my main recording studio and where I filmed a lot of my content. So a lot of my Omegle Bars videos and, and freestyle videos were recorded in here. Nice. How important is it for you to have a place where you can create because i know a lot of people yeah. are good on the go i've met people who are you know interviewing from the seat in a plane like how important is it for you to have that home base uh for me it's really important i um like spaces in general uh are important to me mm -hmm. to like walk into a space and feel like it it pings my mind to do a certain type of work mm -hmm. um has been big so even before like I was privileged enough to have like my own, let's say, space to record in. It was always about having a practice space, nice. you know, like uh, didn't have the mics or the monitors or the computers or anything, but it was like, oh, this is the space where I go. Um, like my, the basement at my parents' house growing up, you nice. know, it's like the basement is the practice space. And yeah. then later it was my friend Brady's uh, attic, you know, where he had the turntables and that was where we got creative and made music. Mm -hmm. So it's like entering those spaces and keeping them sort of streamlined and optimized to do the kind of work that you're trying to do, I think is, is important to me. I agree. Yeah. Um, and I want to take it back. I want to go all the way back. Portland boy. Yes. Little Portland boy. Yes. Um, what's the music scene like there? Is it, is it popping? Is there much going on? Uh, yeah. So Portland has like a rich musical history for sure, but a lot of it is like, uh, on the rock side, uh, like indie rock. There's a lot of like dope indie rock bands and stuff that come out of Portland. I'm not, to be honest, like not that, um, knowledgeable about indie rock mm -hmm. but uh yeah that was always kind of the scene and i think like a punk rock thing as well and like nirvana was up in C uh, seattle yep. you know yep. so that like the pacific northwest is all kind of a uh, regionally sort of culturally very similar and they share crossover a lot so uh lots of rock going on on the hip-hop side um not as much, but there, but there was some dope like underground hip hop happening in Portland as well. There's a dude up in Portland named Cool Nuts, who's like an OG legend, um, who's been doing it forever since since we were kids. He was like the OG back then, and he's still active. And um, there's a dope group called the Lifesavers from Portland uh, that are really really fire. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, is it crazy now, like, to kind of put yourself in those names with some of those folks from back home? Do you at all? Um, I, you know what? I don't think about it that much, to be honest. Like, I don't, uh, I don't like consider like a rank or how I, how I compare now to the, the level of, I guess, fame or admiration that they had, for example. And I think for me, it's always going to be skewed because when I was a kid growing up learning about hip hop, um, looking up to people like, uh, Cool Nuts and, and the Lifesavers and the groups that we saw being active in Portland, like, they're huge to me, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I didn't have anything. You know, I was yeah. like a young student trying to figure it out. So I, I always kind of look up to them, yeah. even now, yeah. you know, no matter how far I, I take it. Right. Um, they'll always sort of be like the idols. In a no, sense. I get that, bro, because like, that's yeah. kind of the thing for me as well. Like, you know, some of the most exciting people that I've met in my journey, uh, <laughs> not the biggest names, but are the people that I grew up watching or yeah. listening to. And they might have been big in New Zealand, but yep. nobody knows who they are here. And totally. That's cool that you, you, you keep that inspiration and you're bringing home into what you do now. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Um, so at what point then did you realize that, that this was a job? And it, kind, mm. and it kind of went from like hobby, having fun to, yeah. okay, this is, this is the journey I can take. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had a really interesting journey in music because um, I've played music since I was a tiny little kid like uh, my parents put me in like just general music classes when i was like five years old it was like these uh things called orf instruments which are which are like marimba type uh xylophone instruments with no wrong notes mm -hmm. they're like p based on the pentatonic scale that's or nice. something or you can no have them wrong in notes. that's sweet yeah so you, you little five-year-olds playing an ensemble on these bar uh percussion instruments and everything sounds okay at least in tune uh and then i started playing the violin when i was seven i started playing the drums when i was 10 and that's right when i first started rapping as well um and so for me, I mean, like, since I was a baby, like music was the coolest thing. Yeah. And I always was just like, this is the thing, 100%. Like music is, is um, to me, it just felt like the coolest thing. It's all I wanted to sort of like spend my time doing. Yeah. Um, 
So I've always identified as a musician. I'm never stopping. Rappers really got no option. Take a corny rapper, put him in a coffin. Before I even considered that, like, eventually I would have to have a job. Right. You know, like, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? It wasn't even about that. It was just like, right here and right now, I'm just like crawling to the music, right. you know? Right. Um, and then I ended up going to college for, uh, I did a jazz studies degree mm -hmm. in Los Angeles at USC. So um, as, as a drummer. Okay. And um, so, you know, and then I graduated and I started gigging around Los Angeles as a jazz drummer. So I've been working as a professional musician. And even before that, and I did my first professional jazz gig in middle school. I think I was in, in seventh nice. or eighth grade. Nice. So I've been like technically making money to play music since back then, okay. since I was a kid and had done a whole bunch of gigs as a drummer uh, and some shows as a rapper. Um, but in terms of me being like Harry Mack, an MC, mm -hmm. and that becoming a job, I think the shift for me was in 2017. Okay. When okay. I first started having like, when I had my first viral video mm -hmm. and that was sort of a springboard for a lot of momentum for me. And that was when I first was like, oh, holy shit. Like, I think something might be really happening. So when did Portland to LA happen? And how did that happen? Why did that happen? Yeah, Portland to LA was 2008 okay. and it was just to study jazz at USC. Oh, it was the, it was yeah. the jazz. Oh, yeah. and cool. Yeah, came um, down here to study music. So jazz was a first love then? Uh, jazz and hip hop came to me uh, at similar times, okay. but jazz came through my father. Nice. Who's a, he's a jazz he, uh, nice. head. He doesn't play music, but he's very into jazz. And uh, he loved Miles Davis, John Ooh. Coltrane, Ooh. Thelonious Monk, um, Sun Ra, loves Sun Ra. Um, so he had a big CD collection. Okay. And um, when I first started playing drums, when I was 10, um, some of the first like records that I played along with were, were jazz records from my cool. dad. Cool. Um, so yeah, the first, the first, uh, music I played along with as a drummer, it was, uh, I think it's relaxing with the Miles Davis quintet is the record. And the song is if I were a bell of cool. uh, Philly Joe Jones on drums. So, um, I was really into jazz, but it, it came via my dad. Nice. Hip hop. I was obsessed with, but it came via like the culture of right. being young. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So you that was, it, yeah. it was the popular music. And so, that always felt in a way closer to my heart mm -hmm. because it, it felt like, oh, this is ours. You know what I mean? As the youth right yeah, now, totally. sort of. Yeah. It's the popular music. It's, it's what's like cool to like. My parents might not understand it. It's like that was, that, was that an issue? Was it? Was that a... Uh, well, my parents, my parents were down. Like they, they uh, it's not like they listened to a lot of hip hop or mm -hmm. anything. But they were cool with it. Like yeah. they thought it was dope You're that I was into it. Yeah, yeah they, they were very supportive of it. But I just mean in that classic sense no, of like, totally. you know, my dad was listening to it's rock and so roll different. records yeah. and his parents were like, what is this music? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but that's why he liked it so much, no, right? Exactly. It's like the music of our yeah. time yeah. kind so of thing. I'm curious then like, I mean, obviously, don't need to say it, but very different styles. Yeah. So I'm wondering like, how did jazz and the musicality of that kind of help you hone in to what you're doing now? Dude. It's so huge, man. Because I always say a freestyle is a, a drum solo with words. Oof. So, like, to me, being a jazz drummer, you know, like, what does that mean? A jazz drummer is somebody who improvises in rhythm, mm -hmm. right? Um, like Roy, Roy Haynes, one of the great jazz drummers who played with Charlie Parker and everybody, uh, I think, has a record called Rhythm Is My Business. And so that's what it is. As a jazz drummer, it's like you are communicating through the language of rhythm in an improvised way. Yeah. And that's what I do now uh, as a rapper. And it's so helpful. Like even without the words, it's like the ticka ticka da, the ticka da da, the ticka da da da, the ticka da da da. All the cadences and stuff, so the ability to hear, um, to hear rhythms, right. you know, to find right. rhythms out of the air kind of yeah. and express yourself through those rhythms is, is sort of the backbone of mm -hmm. being able to freestyle. That's so interesting. And like it <clears throat> kind of all comes back to drumming, you know, in a way, because like I used to dance when I was a kid mm, dope. and then I tried to drum, but it didn't really catch on. Yeah. But I used to compare it to dancing in a way because it is, it's you, you're on the beat, you're, you're moving, yeah. you're, you're moving your body along with the, with the music. So it's interesting that that kind of helped you with your trajectory there. Yeah, um, a lot of the great jazz drummers were uh, tap dancers. No way. Yeah, like Buddy Rich was a tap dancer, I think, and uh, I think like Elvin Jones, a lot of, the, a lot of them were That's tap so dancers. Yeah. So you study the greats then? For sure. Yeah, there's a great quote from Michael Jackson, study the greats and become greater. Mm. I love that. That's fire. I love that. That's fire. Um, so 2016 was the first viral moment, right? Yeah. Okay, um, and now 8.1 million on TikTok, 
6.5 million on Facebook, 2.6 million subs on YouTube, 1.1 million on Insta. Where do most of the clicks come from? Are there any social medias that kind of surprise you? Because when I saw that you had 6.5 mil on Facebook, yeah, I was like, let's go. Because like yeah. that over here in the States isn't really a platform that most people kind of lean towards. Yeah. But in New Zealand, it's all they use. Oh, really? That's crazy. All they use, it's like the number one. Yeah. Um, so where are you finding that most of the, the love is coming from? Uh, I guess like um, it comes it comes from from all over from all those platforms you mentioned. I mean, I was surprised that we grew so fast on TikTok. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest platform now. Um, and that felt to me like it happened very quickly. Uh, I do think Facebook is interesting because, yeah, like you say, like in the States, it's often looked at as the one that most people have kind of moved on from, but like mm -hmm. your aunt still posts family pictures Literally. on there and yep. stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I do think internationally and globally, it's still huge. Yeah. I think a lot of people sleep on the potential to to build an international audience yeah. on Facebook. I agree. But, um, but yeah, it kind of comes from everywhere. And, and my philosophy has kind of been like, I do what I do. Mm -hmm. And if there's a platform that we can showcase it on, uh, and if we have the bandwidth to execute it as a team, we'll be there. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. wherever the people go to uh, check out cool stuff, you know, you can find Harry Mack there doing a freestyle. Nice, bro. Nice. Yeah. I like that. We try to be everywhere. Um, good. I mean, you have to be. Yeah. You can't really be in one place. He said, no matter what your job is. I was talking to a journalist the other day and they were like, I'm not on social. Like, you have to be on social. Yeah, totally. Like, every single job, it's so important to be there. Definitely. Um, and it's cool that you've experimented on all the different ones. So yeah. you're always keeping an eye out on what's next. In terms of platforms, yeah, um, yeah, me or my or my team. Uh, shout out right. to my man Khan, who's here right now, but uh, and and some of my other team members too. But um, but uh, yeah, we're always kind of staying apprised of of where we might be able to showcase the freestyles. Right. And I, I feel like for me, like building a team has been really important too. Because to be honest with you, like my mind keeps going back to the music. You right. know, right. Um, I'm very focused on um, how to get better as a freestyler and as a performer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, and it's been cool too as a part of my journey to learn about these platforms and to gain more knowledge um, about how to run a business and you know how to do all these things that I didn't even know I was going to end up doing. That's right. Yeah. Um, so that's been a great learning for me. But uh, but yeah, we're always trying to stay apprised to where we might be able to you know um, show our videos or or show our music next. Mm -hmm. I like how you say like freestyle comes first. Like that's yeah where your head is, and you know you're you're lucky now that you do have that team around you that can kind of help move you in the right direction. And yeah you can stay focused on the craft. Yeah, totally. Um, and I want to get into the craft. I want yeah. to talk the craft. Let's bro. do it, dude. I love talking. Because it's fascinating. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is like, are you always like doing word exercises, brain <laughs> exercises? Like, how do you exercise your brain? Yeah, um, kind of. I mean, I am. I exercise my brain uh, through freestyling okay. and through... Um, creating exercises for myself basically uh to to, to chip away at my weaknesses mm -hmm. so i feel very fortunate that like i said my parents put me in those music classes when i was five and i started playing the violin at seven and like i had a, you know a teacher who would give me something to practice and uh when i was seven i didn't really like to practice so my dad would have to make me practice and i'd be mm -hmm. like throwing a tantrum mm -hmm. and he's yelling at me like oh, you gotta think you gotta do this but uh <laughs> shout out to my dad because i think through that process even though it was painful in the beginning because i was young um, I learned how to practice, yeah. meaning like identify weaknesses and create exercises that specifically, uh, work to, to eradicate those weaknesses in, in your playing, um, and learning that that can be this really fulfilling thing because you can, you can start to feel progress and see yourself getting better. Right. So, uh, yeah, I treat freestyling, like learning a musical instrument, any, anything that, um, that I want to get better at, I'll, I'll consider what exercise might allow me to work at that specific thing. Yeah. And it's crazy too, because like the things that you think you need to get better at, people probably don't even notice. Right. right. You know what I mean? Like we're all our own biggest critic. Yeah. And we all, you know, see things and think, oh, I could have done that better. Um, do you have moments like that where you're watching a video back and be like, this bar would have gone better here? Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely, man. No, I, I notice uh, so much detail about what I'm doing and what could have been a little bit better. There's this funny thing too, like um, as a drummer, like time feel is really important to me. So like the, um, like time feel meaning like exactly where you place the notes, right? Yeah. right? Um, so like that's what gives all the great drummers their signature, you know? Um, somebody, uh, Philly Joe Jones has a certain time feel, like his beat, he, play, he lays it back in a certain way. And then that's gonna be different from Art Blakey. These are jazz drummers that I'm a fan of. So uh, for rappers, it's the same, like Biggie, 
is so behind the beat, laid back, right. you know, it's amazing, you know? Um, and then there's somebody else that might be more uh, like aggressive and on top of the beat. So maybe that would be like, um, like tech nine or somebody like that, where it's like really like, you know, it's a, con it. he's on it. Um, and then they're both amazing, you know, and it creates a different feeling. So for me, like when you ask, like, do I notice the little things, there's been times where I'll like record a verse and send it to somebody, um, if we're working on something and then they'll like in their DAW or the program they're working on the song, they'll align it like slightly not exactly Interesting. correctly Interesting. somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I hear it back, I'll I like email back and I'm like, yo, I think uh, the verse is a little misaligned. And they're like, what do you mean? We just lined it up like to the beat, how you sent it to us. And I'm like, oh, but the time feels wrong. Yeah, you don't get what I was trying yeah, to do. Yeah, I'm like, it's, yeah. it's the, t the feel is wrong. Like I'm yeah. almost positive, Yeah. you know? And then like, he'll email back and be like, bro, we zoomed in like all the way on the grid and like, you're right, man. It was like three samples off or whatever. Wow. And so uh, to wow. me, that stands out so much because I'm like, I wouldn't have felt it that yeah. way. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, so that's just one example of the the level of detail that comes when you when you do something for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of that thing, too, like where when you're a beginner, um, you feel like you're a lot better than you are because you don't know what you don't know. Right. Yes. You yes. know, yes. so it's, it's, it's yes. fun to be an absolute beginner. Yeah. You know, I do that sometimes try to learn uh piano or something or learn something i don't know and it's like wow this is oh i got the chords going yeah, it's like, go, yeah. yeah but uh any professional pianist would quickly point out that uh yeah, right. i don't know exactly. shit <laughs> exactly. um are you always studying words are you always um uh not really but i do uh i'm always listening to to hip-hop so okay. in that sense i'm always absorbing information and words and vocabulary i i think that uh since i was young like my mom used to say i was a sponge mm -hmm. um and uh it's like whatever comes in i kind of uh absorb it you know if, I, if i'm into it if i'm interested in it and so like listening to just so much rap music growing up um a lot of that vocabulary and that language is just like I embedded yeah. um i never used to like to read ironically so like I, people are like did you read the dictionary and it's like no nah, dude i didn't even want to read a book i have fallen in love with reading now as an adult like in the last five or six years now i actually do really enjoy reading so someone reads a book good on you but uh yeah but um but yeah i'm always uh i guess i'm always playing with words and i'm always practicing and freestyling and using word generators and things like that to try to expand my vocabulary word generators yeah um so what what don't we see what what part of the process has no one seen yet? Like, what does that look mm. like? I would say, like, in general, uh, people haven't really seen, like, what it looks like to really practice. Okay. I would say yep. that, like, I think people hear that, like, oh, I practice all the time. And the perception is like, oh, yeah, like, you just put beats on and freestyle all mm -hmm. the time. But I don't think like somebody would assume that um, I go into this site called Random Word Generator, right? And they know about that, but and, and some people know about that. But and then you can pick the syllable count, and then you pick one syllable, you know, uh, because you're working on this triplet cadence, uh -huh. and you want to be able to go dig a dig a dig a dig a dig a word, dig a dig a dig a dig a word, dig a dig a dig a dig a word consistently with no gaps. So you set it on one syllable and you sit there and you do that on a looped beat for like a couple hours, you know? That would probably seem really weird to like most people, you know? that's honing in the craft, man. Seriously. Yeah. You know, through my job, being able to talk to these artists and songwriters and dancers and whatever it may be. and Yeah. You do have to put in the time, <laughs> you know, 100%, like dude. you actually do. And yeah. like, I'm not surprised at all to hear that yeah, that's yeah. what your process looks like, because you just, you're not, you can't just be that good. Yeah. Like talent, you know, obviously you have the talent, but like you've honed in that skill, Yeah, you know, and are constantly Thank you. getting better at it. Trying to. Yeah, definitely trying to. And it does, man. It just takes a lot of time. I think especially like, um, Anybody who is an improviser can relate to this, you know, and what you do is improvisational, right? Because you don't yeah. know what I'm going to say and yeah. you're responding to what I'm saying. Um, and certainly anybody in the music world who is an improviser knows it's like I'm not um, learning something that's pre-composed. Okay. I'm like absorbing a language, you know, mm -hmm. and that just takes time and repetition. And it's like the more language you can absorb through like patience and repetition and just saying like you're just going to let it absorb for however long it takes you know and recognizing that whatever language you're absorbing right now won't naturally come out in your in your performance until like maybe two or three months down the line yeah. right um that that 
that's the process, you know? And, and so, um, it just takes time, mm -hmm. you know? And you have to like really, yeah, you have to like repeat these things and really absorb them. Yeah. You know? As you said, you're a sponge. Um, yeah. Try to be. Now, one of the impressive things I think about what you do is that you radiate a lot of positivity in your mm. life. Thank it's you. Very important to you. And you, yeah. you know, it's very obvious to the viewer that that's what you're doing. Yeah. Um, was that always important? Was that always something going into this that you were like, I want to be a force for good? I, you know, because <laughs> you know, one of the misconceptions about rap is that it needs to be vulgar. Sure. You know, woman, money, cars, all that, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but how important is it for you to kind of showcase like, it doesn't have to be, you know? Yeah. Well, it's funny because I'm also a huge fan of a lot of people whose content does really revolve around those things. And there's nothing things. wrong with that. There's right. wrong with, it's just not your style. Right. It's not my style. So for me, it's like the positivity and stuff, I think, comes from just um, what feels authentic to me, mm -hmm. you know? So like as an example, like people see my skill set as a freestyler and they're like, oh, dude, you would kill it as a battle rapper. Like you should get into battle rap, you oh. know, um, which is interesting because actually a lot of the battle rap now is, is written. Um, it, right. it, it's amazing, but it's, it's just not a freestyle thing. Right. Um, but, uh, my thing is like, yeah, but I don't want to go, I just, I just don't want to diss people. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, like, cause right. it's not natural to me to want to focus the energy in that way. Yeah. Um, which doesn't take anything away from battle rappers who I'm again, a fan yeah. of, you know, I enjoy watching it, but for me, it doesn't feel organic. So I think for me, it's like, if I'm going to do this. Um, I want to try to use it as a vehicle to spread joy mm -hmm. to other people. And I think that's what's really dope about freestyling is that um, some of that like transfer of joy is inherent to the craft because I'll find that like if I'm out in public and I do a freestyle about somebody's outfit, they might have a straight face in the beginning, but once I incorporate them, their face lights up, you know? Right. And suddenly we're engaged in like this energy exchange yeah. um, of, of, of sharing this kind of like positive moment together. So I don't think, uh, but but yeah, to answer your question, like I don't think it was preconceived from the beginning. Like when I was doing my first freestyles and writing my first rhymes and all through high school, I wasn't like, yeah, man, and I'm going to do it with the positive, on the mm -hmm. positive tip. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really like that. It was more so just um, that's kind of who I am and it's yeah. what makes me feel good, yeah. you know? It's and natural to you. It comes out of me naturally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was influenced by a lot of like positive rap groups, though, I will say. Like Black Alicious is one of the first groups that I was a real big fan of. Mm -hmm. Uh, shout out to, to Black Alicious and Rest in Peace. Gifted Gab is the rapper from that group, and he's amazing. He was my first favorite rapper nice. for years. He was my nice. favorite MC. And uh, they always came with a positive vibe in their music, you know, um, not in like a sappy way. Uh, you know, it was, it was real, but um, it always had a hopeful uh, sort of like vibe to it. So that, that probably is part of it, too. Mm. And you mentioned there, obviously, when you're out and about, you know, doing your gorilla bars or whatever, like you see someone's shirt. You see someone's hat. You see someone's shoes. Yeah. How f long before you spit it out have you noticed that thing? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, not that long. Okay. Maybe on average like a... So the thing is, it's hard for me to think in, in seconds and minutes because I'm thinking in like beats and bars. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, thinking yeah. in musical time. Mm -hmm. Um, everything that's the grid when I'm when I'm rapping yeah. and actually I uh, quite often lose track of clock time So I just sit there and I oh oops. I was freestyling for seven minutes. These poor people. <laughs> These poor they guys. probably had somewhere to go But um, I don't think anyone's complaining Yeah, hopefully not but um But uh, yeah for me, so it's like um it's very linear the way that I'm doing a freestyle most of the time. So uh, like some people would say like, oh, do you like get in a space, look around and plan out like 32 bars, like you know what you're gonna say? And the answer is like a resounding no. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to hold all that in my head. That, that's a whole different skill. Um, but basically what I'm doing is often I'm using this technique called setup punchline, okay. where um, I see the object and then I set it up with something that rhymes with it. So like if we're gonna call this uh, a cup, right? Um, then I'll set it up with, with, a, with some kind of rhyme. So, you know, never falling down, we'd be on the up and up. I wake you up, something like the coffee out your mm -hmm. cup, right? Mm -hmm. So I saw a cup and then I realized I should say we're on the up and up. Right. And then it's like, while I'm doing that, you kind of lock the pieces in, Yeah. right? So I lock that this is the end of the phrase. I'm gonna say up and up, okay, cool. That's kind of handled, mm -hmm. it's managed. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can set that aside. And then it opens up the mental bandwidth to notice that there's a phone next to it. So then right. while I while I finish yep. up saying the thing about the cup, then I go right from that. I wake you up, something like the coffee in the cup. Never falling off because I'm staying in the zone. My lyrics stay connected like a cellular Ooh. phone. And again, yeah. while I'm getting to phone, then I see your green coat. And then I go something that rhymes with coat. Yeah. 
So it's all just, um, I mean, that's like, you know, at the basic level, that's what's happening. Yeah. And, and you're just daisy chaining these together mm -hmm. in real time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? It's interesting because like, I see a lot of, it's obviously very different, but I also see a lot of similarities in kind of what we do because like, yeah. you know, when I'm interviewing, I'm always having to think that next thing, where is that going to go? Yeah. And I have my tells for myself of like, oh, he's thinking. I can see his brain like moving. If yeah. I, it might be like this and then I might slow down. Yeah. And in that period is when I'm, what's that for you? Do you have a thing? Yeah. It's, I uh, say my name. Hey, yo, it's Harry Mack. <laughs> Interesting, bro. No, no. Uh, Interesting. And so in the beginning, like that was the biggest like critique of my style. Like on the internet was like, yo, why does he say his name so much? Mm -hmm. And when I first like uh, saw that, cause I'd been freestyling for years, you know, um, but I had never really like made videos and posted them and at least not consistently. Like I was once I started like actually making content. And so if people first started saying like, why does he say his name so much? I was like, what? No, I don't. <laughs> and I went, I watched the video back. I was like, damn, well, I do. Like, I say my name at the beginning of almost every couplet, but, um, it's basically like, it's called a filler phrase and there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can utilize, but it's just a thing that you say while you're taking a mental breath. Hmm. So like using the same example as before, that would be like me saying, Hey, yo, it's Harry Mack. Can't nobody stop me. When I spit, I wake you up like the coffee. Hey, yo, it's Harry Mack. I'm staying in the zone. My bars stay connected like a cellular phone. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, it's Harry Mack. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you keep coming back to that thing. I thought it was just self-promo. I, I, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. But a lot of people thought that too. They would defend me. They would be like, it's genius marketing. And I was like, uh, well, I won't intervene. But actually, no, like I can't take credit for that. I, I, that's not why I did it. Yeah. But it worked out well. Because yeah. a lot of people, they would remember my name because I kept hammering yeah. it. But uh, yeah, it's a filler phrase. And so then you... um. That's a great example of something like something that I would view and consider sort of like a weakness, you know, to my style. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm too reliant on this filler phrase. So then you can um, amass a list of maybe you have five possible filler phrases. So it's not always, hey, yo, it's Harry Mack. But at other times you might say, hey, yo, check it, you know, or listen here mm -hmm. or peep it, you know, and then you can start shuffling them in, you know, so that it's less obvious that that's what you're it's, doing. Yeah. And then and then like currently what I practice is like, well, what if you what if you reduced it so it was just one syllable like uh or yo mm -hmm. you know and and then the next step would be what if you just removed it all together so that it just flows continuously from one thing into the next mm -hmm. which is like a sprint it's like a mm -hmm. mental sprint because you don't get to stop and take the mental breath right. if, if that makes sense yeah no it does are you exhausted after going to venice beach and yes because i mean like it standing on a red carpet for x amount of time your brain moving a million miles an hour after that i don't want to talk to anyone i'm just out i'm out yeah is that the same absolutely yeah really? same here yeah the hardest part of my job is um energy management mm -hmm. that's the hardest part because i love freestyling and i wish that i could just do it all 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 day mm -hmm. um but i can't because of you know i have to think about my voice and then i have to think about oh. the mental exhaustion yeah. Yeah. and the um yeah just the energy that it takes to be uh, fully in the moment and fully aware and also aware of other people's energy and vibe, like that I'm not offending or upsetting or, 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 or like creating um, a negative feeling for anybody, right. you know, making sure that everybody feels included if they want to be and not included if it seems like they don't want to be. Interesting. There's a lot of like sort of human aspects to it as well yeah. Yeah. Um, that I never really thought about. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the biggest challenge is, is maintaining the energy balance. Hmm. So what's the most satisfying part of it? like getting out and about and doing these bars is it the reaction is it you know proving a skeptic wrong is it you know impressing yourself like what what is the satisfying part in it for you um all of the above <laughs> definitely all of the above yeah i think uh it's kind of like, for me, I think it's really the thrill of making something out of nothing mm -hmm. in real time mm -hmm. you know it's like going in with nothing mm. complete blank slate mm. you know and uh it's like hey we're gonna build something together right now yeah that's completely unique and one of one and this is the only time that it's going to be made exactly this way and it's going to involve you and you like you're going to be a collaborator in this yep. thing um that's just so exciting to me you know it's amazing and like to be real like i'm 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 a fan of magic, you know, mm -hmm. like I love like sleight of hand magicians and uh, all kinds of magic. I just got to see David Copperfield in Vegas. The legend, bro. Dude, blew my mind. The king of magic. Yeah, I mean, he is magic, right? Yeah. David got this, yeah. like, he's the name. Uh, but I love like the David Blaine Street Magic show. Cool. And, and uh, when I was a kid, I was just like, how's he doing this, you know? Um, and I think that freestyling uh, 
pings a similar feeling in people. You know, it is magic because it's pull, it's pulling something out of thin air. Yeah. You know, it's like there was nothing and now suddenly there's this thing and we've, we've created it together live and it's, it feels unbelievable, you know? How often do you come across a skeptic? Someone saying, you wrote that hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that happens for sure. You know, yeah, oh, this isn't real. I think in the beginning, like, there was a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. And then um, my thing was like... Uh, Cause you know, it's a losing battle to like jump in and be like, no man, I really did freestyle. Yeah, it's not even worth you it. don't want to engage. <laughs> but, uh, my thing was like, eventually I feel like through the sheer volume yeah. of content, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. it will no longer be an issue. And I feel like that is what has in fact happened. I mean, there's years of video. You couldn't, you can, you can never sit no, there you, and you watch yeah. all of it. You no. never could, you know? Um, It'd be impossible. Like at a certain point, my parents and my like biggest supporters, my family were just like, yo, we can't even, they're like, we can't keep can't up. catch up. Anymore. You know, my best yeah. friends are like, dude, what, what you been doing? I can't, yeah. well, I can't even keep up, you know? Yeah. Um, and so at a certain point, it's like, you don't question if like John Coltrane really improvised his saxophone solos. Yeah, right. Because right. there's thousands of recordings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not to mention all the live gigs that everybody yeah. turned up to and saw it happen live right in front of them. Um, so to me, that, that's, that's the cool part is, is that it, and I don't know if that was so much a strategy that I had or just it's sort of, that's what ended up happening because right. I kept making content. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't even know if I can really take credit for that in terms of that being my strategy, but I do like that that's the way that it went instead of me being like, no, I really am freestyling, no, and like, right. we, you know, yeah. and, and having, yeah. to, having to do that. Because yeah. um, at the end of the day, it's, it's just, uh, people can believe whatever they want to believe, you know? Yeah. I'm just well, I, I think at this point, you don't need to prove yourself to anyone. Right. Um, you know, and, and the element of surprise, I think, plays a huge part in what you do as well. Yeah. Right. And the reactions and the more you've presented yourself over the years and, you know, the more people that have seen your stuff, the more people you get recognizing you when you're out and about. Yeah. Doing the freestyles. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, what that is like for you. Does it improve the vibe? Does it kind of ruin it? Because you're like, I wanted to surprise you. Like, how, how does that work? Uh, no, I mean, for me, it's really dope. Like, it's it's uh it's cool that people recognize me when I'm out there because I'm like, wow, that's amazing, man. Like that, that I've reached these people, yeah, never gets you know? It, yeah. Um, so it's cool, you know, and I'm, I'm not at a level where it's like, I can't go about my day. You know what I mean? I'm sure if I was, you know, at Bieber level or something, right. it, it reaches a point where it's like, yeah, okay, this isn't much, that cool much. anymore. But, um, but for me, it's always, it's always cool and, and inspiring, you know, just to, to know that I'm reaching people. But uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there is something to say that like, I think the best reactions mm -hmm. uh, and the most authentic, genuine reactions are people who are like, who have no idea who I am. Yeah. And even better than that is when they're like, all right, fine, dude, let's hear it. Yeah, no, and they exactly. think it's going to be whack. And then it's like that whole turning skeptics to believers thing is a very um, contagious story. Yeah. Do you know I what I mean? Like yeah, we no, love watching that story. Yeah. I think for the audience, like when I think about like, why are my freestyle videos viral like that? You know, um, I think that's part of the hook yeah. is like the skeptic being converted to the full on like, oh my God, I exactly. love it. Yeah, you know, exactly. uh, it's that, a nice that, art. I agree. I think that's the viral part of it. Obviously the talent, but also the the, the reaction. And yeah. it's like, you know, you do get people that, you know, are kind of acting too cool for school. Like yeah. people that kind of, you know, acting like they don't want any part of it. Like how many no's do you get that we don't see? Mm. Um, yeah, we get, we get some no's, you know, uh, I don't know. I, uh, sometimes we'll walk up. People are in a hurry. You know, like if I'm out in the streets doing freestyles, it's kind of a lot to ask, you know, of somebody to just stop. And usually when you're asking somebody to stop, you're trying to sell them something or right, sign them up true. for a cause. Especially or a on Venice card. Beach. Like, you know, exactly. Trying to stop. Yeah. Everyone left and right is trying to stop you for some um, self-serving reason. And of course, you know, to be fair, like my self-serving reason is to be able to create this content, you know, and, right. and put it out. Um, but... Uh, the cool thing is we're not selling anything, you know? So I think as long as people have time on their hands, it, it's usually, it usually goes okay. Mm. But yeah, some people will say no. And I try to be really respectful. It's really important to me. Like, um, yeah. cause I know I'm asking a lot of people. So uh, we never are out there like with a jaded vibe, like, oh, whatever, you're lost, you know, or anything like that. It's like, I understand what's happening. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm lucky if I get to make the, the video. Yeah. And yeah. you've done it all over the world at this point. Yeah. I saw you're in was it venice italy like you've been yep. all over america at this point from venice beach to venice italy man there we go <laughs> i like that but like when you're over there yeah right i mean chances of people knowing you probably go down quite a bit yeah um but like how does that 
change your style or your flow or your does that at all um that's an interesting question so like not in in a way no and in a way yes so like my style is kind of just like i i show up and i do what i do yeah. in a way it's yeah. like um i practice and i absorb all this language and then uh it's like Charlie Parker supposedly said, like, uh, practice your scales, practice your chords, and then forget all that shit and just play, mm -hmm. you know? And who knows? That's probably a misquote, or who knows if he even said it. I mean, you know what? You made your point. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, yeah. Across. yeah. But uh, to me, that's really, uh, really resonates. So I, I do all this, this practice, and then once I'm out there, I kind of just let go, and it's like, here we go. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, my style doesn't really um, depend on where I'm at. But then, at the same time, I do think a big part of like me being successful as a freestyler is being able to sort of adopt my style on the fly to what's going to work with the audience at hand. Mm -hmm. So like when you talk about being in Venice, Italy, like a lot of the groups we approach, English is not the first language. Interesting. Um, Hadn't because of that. <laughs> yeah, because there's tons of European tourists there as well. There's people from all over the world in Venice, Italy, right? And so we'll approach groups and quickly realize that th they can speak English, but, it, but it's not their first language, right? Yeah. And so in that case, while I'm freestyling, I'm searching for the references that are going to resonate. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably not doing like super elaborate wordplay flips and stuff right. like that. Mm -hmm. I might do a couple for the like YouTube audience at home, right. you know, for their enjoyment. But I recognize that in that moment, like some of the things that might work for like a English fluent audience are not going to work with this audience. Mm -hmm. Or similarly, like people will know that if there are little kids, I usually don't swear. You know, but if there are no little kids, then I will swear. Yeah. Um, and things like that, you know, uh, if it's like a, if, if I'm rapping for people that seem to like really know what's happening with the bars, I can usually kind of be like, oh, these people know what's up with with rap and right. hip hop. Right. So then I can make it really about that lyricism and technicality and bars and flips. And, and that will get the reaction and that will work. But then if I'm rapping for people where I'm like, oh, these, it seems like maybe they don't really listen to hip hop then I can figure out a way to sort of uh, appeal to that as well. So it's, it, but it all kind of happens on the fly. Right. And I'm not thinking about that I'm doing it really. I mean, I guess in the back of my head I am. But it's not like on the top of your head, yeah. Yeah, it's not yeah. a conscious thing. Because if I had to like conceptualize it fully, then I would be too distracted from actually doing the freestyle. So right. It's just one of those instincts you develop. I think it was interesting what you said about like, you know, you might throw in something for the people watching at home. Yeah. So like when you're out there and you're doing these things, you're thinking about, the person in front of you yeah the people at home your brain's going a million miles an hour yeah that's insane <laughs> do you know what i mean like are you like yeah when you're out and about and you're creating these things how much of it are you thinking like okay this is going to make a good video as opposed to i'm going to impress this person or does it kind of go hand in hand at this point uh in a way they go hand in hand because uh if i impress the people it will make a good video <laughs> right. most of the time yeah most of the time but um but yeah, you know, I'm out there with uh, with with uh, two other team members of mine who are filming, and and so we will group up after each clip, and we and that's when we sort of like discuss the video, how it plays in the video. So we'll be like, oh, do we think that was like main video worthy, or does that feel like it had an energy for an outtake? Um, you know, maybe something for the Patreon, and so we're kind of trying to, we're always sort of aware that what we're doing is creating this video. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll discuss things like that, and then a lot of it like before we approach a group um it's a very interesting thing because you're kind of trying to from a distance be like oh they seem like they might be into yeah. it uh which is a weird it's kind of like a very judgmental thing because you don't actually know no you know and i feel like you can tell you can tell like well, by people's energy straight away whether or not they're gonna like feel you or not totally so it's like are they laughing and do they look happy like okay it seems like they're out for a good time they're not like power walking to get somewhere right you know so it's right. like basic things like that it's like okay they seem cool like let's approach them and see you know they already seem happy whereas if people are just straight face though they don't actually seem that happy <laughs> or they're not looking or their eyes are on the ground exactly like exactly yeah. so then so then we might not approach so there's a lot of strategy involved like that the funny thing is though sometimes it's very surprising you know halfway walking up to a group i'm like oh actually i don't know the vibe looks kind of low looks a little weird but uh, i'm already doing it so let's try anyway and then it'll be amazing yeah. You connect, you know? Other times people are laughing and you approach them and then they immediately tighten up and are like, no. Right. right. <laughs> so you never know. I think it's interesting, you know, you mentioned obviously like the main videos versus outtakes versus this versus this and there's TikToks and there's reels and there's, yeah. you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite of all time video that you've done? Is there one that comes to mind? It's like, oh, that one went off start to finish. 
Uh, I did this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch that I could mention. So I'll mention a couple. Okay. Um, one was uh, during a lot of my content came came out like I saw a lot of growth during COVID, like during the lockdown and yeah. stuff like that, because everyone was at home and and um, people needed to entertain themselves and, and stay in, try to stay in good spirits. You know, it was a tough time. And like the major TV networks and stuff weren't able to produce. And so it was, a lot of it was like independent content creators. It was kind of like an, an opportunity in a sense. Um, as weird as that is, uh, but uh, it was though a lot of the artists and stuff that I've met over the last year in particular were saying I only picked up a guitar during COVID and now they're yeah. like a superstar. Exactly, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, people had time on their hands. So, um, so there, but there was this. Uh, so I started doing my Amigo Bars series, you know, because we couldn't go outside during anymore. COVID. Was that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like people had suggested I do it for a long time, but I was, I was like, I don't know. I, I like doing it in person, mm -hmm. you know. But then once there was no option, I was like, all right, let me check this out. Yeah. Um, Smart. it was cool. So, and I, I enjoyed it, but it was like, uh, it felt like kind of just like a fun thing, you know, like, oh, it's just sort of a fun, silly kind of content. I don't know if it's really going to be that meaningful necessarily beyond that, but like, who, you know, who cares? This is great. We'll make it people, people like it. It's fun. And then, um, episode 18 of that series, there was an interaction I had with this man who I first did my regular thing. He gave me some words like Batman and uh, something else, baby Yoda or something like that. And I just did a freestyle barring out, whatever, having fun. And he, he loved it. He's like, Oh dude, that was incredible. And I was like, oh, okay, dope. I was about to leave. And he was like, actually, hold on, man. Can you do a freestyle for this person? And he held up a piece of paper and it was actually, uh, for the funeral service for, oh, it turned out it was his fiance who had died from COVID. And he, oh, wow. I, and it was crazy. It was a very heavy moment. And I was like, damn, I was like, well, can you tell me a few things about her? And he was like, yeah, we used to love to go on road trips and he gave me just a couple things and then I did a freestyle for her and it was like, he's crying at the end. And like, right. um, it was this whole thing. And it honestly it was like too much for me to even process yeah, at the I time. Like I'm thinking about now. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. So I was like, wow, man, I don't, you know, and then I'm like thinking about like my responsibility in terms of like the content itself. So I was like, yo, bro, by the way, man, we don't have to do anything with this one. Like I, I'm recording this, you know, like, uh, <laughs> um, we could just use the first one. Whatever. And he was like, nah, dude, I want people to see that, wow. put that out. Wow. And so that was huge, man. Cause that was like a whole different thing for me where I was like, wow, dude, like, um, you know, even though this is this weird Omegle platform and, and that has a whole connotation with it. And this is sort of just like, you know, the, what would seemingly just be maybe limited in, in how uh, emotionally impactful it can be just based on the format mm -hmm. that like broke that down for me. Wow, and man. I was like, yeah, this is actually like meaningful, especially right now, you know, like, and it, it's cool too. Cause it's like, we were connecting virtually and that was the only way that you could connect with people during that time. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. So it's like, this is how it is. This is what humanity is right now, kind of in many ways. And it was just really cool to have that moment with a stranger. Um, so that's one. And then, uh, there was this other one too though later in the Omegle Bar series where I was rapping about like the Greek gods and stuff. It was for these two girls. What was that one? 40. 40. 40. Episode Dang. 40. And I just thought that uh I wasn't watching as much of my stuff back at this point. Like okay. my team was putting the videos together because I actually to be honest with you I I don't like watching myself. I was going to ask. And I'm not very good at rating my stuff, you know? Um but th 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 that one came out and I was like, oh, let me check it out, you know? And I pressed play on it and I watched that clip and I remember I was like, damn, dude, that freestyle it was is sick. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dude, I don't think I could have done it any better right. on that one. Yeah. Not even on an ego yeah. thing. I was just like, right, right. wow, like mm -hmm. I really, because I was separated from it and I, I guess I impressed myself with, yeah. the, with the packaging of yeah. it. And I was like, cool, man, that's really, that's great. That was, mm -hmm. Good job with that yeah, one. Well done. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good that you can pat yourself on the back like that. Yeah. And you say no ego thing, bro. No ego at all. Like I, I am such an advocate for people knowing and uh, just encouraging themselves at what they're good at. Yeah. Um. That's so it's, it's cool that you you know you're able to do that. Hell yeah. Um. It also it's interesting with Amigo, right? Like yeah. For, during COVID, obviously, I was doing a lot of Zoom interviews mm. as opposed to in person, and I yeah. found that like. I hate it. <laughs> like, yeah. I just, you know, you just can't feel someone. You can't really yeah. get to know where they are. Yeah. For the first few episodes, is did you kind of feel like that? Like, because going from, you know, the beaches and the streets to, like, 
a delay on uh, who knows what their internet's like. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Was that a weird thing for you at first? Definitely, yeah, yeah. I think, But I think I benefited because I went into it with no expectation. No, for sure. Like, to me, it was just a full-on experiment. Mm -hmm. And I was doubtful. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, ah, I don't know about this, yeah. but like, fuck it, let's try it. Yeah. And that energy, I think, helped me along a lot because I was able to just be like, well, whatever. Like, if we get something cool, great. If not, so be it. Is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and were you putting in a keyword or were you just like, just going yeah. on and seeing who you could possibly No, find? you have to put in keywords. Okay. The site no longer exists, but yeah, you have to put in keywords to not see uh, things you don't want to see. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I would... Uh, yeah, I experimented with a bunch of different ones, you know. In the beginning, I would just type like movies, books, fashion, just oh, like what anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then um, TikTok became a very popular one yeah. because a lot of TikTok creators would create on Omegle, mm -hmm. and so um, that was one that we used a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just it was random. And as you say, side doesn't exist anymore. See you later. Um, are yeah. you? happy to kind of close that chapter because <laughs> it was it was episode 100. I mean, it kind of yeah. put the bow on it perfectly. Yeah, it was crazy because I was on, we were on tour in Europe and I was sitting with my team and I was like, yo, guys, like, I think that it might be time to, like, end the Omegle series or at least take a break from it. Did the whole team go, <gasps> <laughs> nah, the thing is, <laughs> I felt like it might be like that, but no, um, I have a really amazing team and we're all very uh, aligned, aligned yeah. and... Um, that's obvious for meeting them. Oh, hell yeah. Appreciate that, man. No, every, they're, they're really great people. I'm really lucky. Mm -hmm. But everyone was like, yeah, man, that's what, we, that's what we'll do then. Like, mm -hmm. makes total sense. And and for me, it was just like, um, I said this in my caption when I announced it, but it was like, yo, I'm uh, on Amigo. I've rapped slow. I've rapped fast. I've made people laugh. I've made people cry. I've done collaborations. I've done solo stuff. I've done this and that. I've done bars. I've You know, and it, it was just like, I felt like I gave everything I could give to yeah. that format yeah you know and then it was like i just gotta let it breathe yeah. you know and it was a tough decision because that was the most viral type of content that i made and you know it's it. sort of like the biggest driver for the business in many ways huh. um and it was an experiment and it was an experiment yeah who would have thought isn't that crazy yeah but for me you know it's like okay it, it's the biggest driver for the business but like i don't want to be just a business that like makes a, a product you know what I mean? Right. Like where it's just like, oh, I can make this consistent product well and people like it and, mm -hmm. and that's great. But to me, um, it's always been about more than that. You know, it's like it's about art and creativity and yep. pushing myself. Yep. So, um, so yeah, what the crazy thing is, we announced that we were going to stop doing it after 100. Mm -hmm. um, and then two days after, two or three days after 100 came out, the site, sh the site went down. Isn't that wild? People were like, he knew, like, <laughs> he was like, like who told them? you, you yeah, know? No, exactly. Total coincidence, man. But those types of things happen to me. It's weird. Goodbye, Amigo. Yeah. Um, see you later. Yeah. Uh, but lives on your YouTube channel. Yeah, that's right. Um, the good parts. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, all artists at some point or another go through creative blocks. Yeah. Um, but you can't really in your line, right? Do you? How does that work for you? What does that look like? Yeah. Um, so for me... Um, it's interesting because I've, I've actually started writing uh, a lot more songs recently in the last, uh, you know, f four or five months. That's sort of like a, a new thing that I'm focusing on a lot. Um, and so I think it's a little different with writing songs versus freestyling when you talk about like creative blocks. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about freestyling first because that's what I'm most known for and, and most comfortable doing, I would say. Um, but yeah, for me, it's like, like I said, uh, freestyling is a language. And so... Um, on your worst day, you can still communicate mm -hmm. with somebody else mm -hmm. in most cases, right? Uh, if you're in a bad mood, but uh, the waiter says, like, what do you want to eat? So be like, all right, I'll take the pasta. Right, right. right. Um, so for me, it's like um, I train all the, I, I, I practice so much and I have so many reps as a freestyler. Yes, of course, I always wanted to go to this super incredible inspired level. Like, I'm always hoping that that will happen, you know? Uh, and when it does, it's so great. And you just kind of like, wow, this is amazing. You know, that, that everything worked out in just the right way. And you get that one, like from episode 40, like I was saying, it was like, damn, it really works for like this time. You know, this was really great. Um, but when it, when it can't go there for whatever reason, whether it's because of my own mindset and how I feel or just the circumstances or the audience I'm performing for or any number of reasons, um, it just falls to, uh, 
a, a baseline level that is still a, a professional level. Gotcha. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, that's why you practice so much. And, and that's why in the practice room, I push myself so far beyond. Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to practice what's at like the razor's edge of what is possible for right. me. Right. You know, not the things that I'm already good at, but the things that I can't quite do. Right. And uh, you practice those things to build out this headroom, you know? Um, so like if you're in a car that can go 300 miles per hour, going 80 on the freeway is easy for that car. But if you're in a, uh, like most of the cars that I've owned that can only go 100, 120, <laughs> then when you're going 80, you're kind of getting up there, yeah. you know? The engine yeah. is working hard. Yeah. And so my thing is like, become the freestyle equivalent of a Formula One racing car. Mm -hmm. So that when, I'm j when I just have to drive on the regular streets, it's easy, you know? And does that make sense? Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, you know, I, 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 you talk about the original music that yeah. you've been doing, and I want to get into that shortly. But has yeah. a freestyle ever turned into an original? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, well, as in many ways, yes. Like, uh, I think we kind of play with the um game like we kind of punk the game okay. if you will in some ways and and that's always been exciting and interesting to me like we release compilations of the best omegle bars freestyles like on spotify mm -hmm. you so know it was a vinyl too you can get the vinyl yeah and we made a vinyl too and like for those it's like i had them mixed and stuff and like they actually sounded really cool. dull like because I, I captured the multi-track and stuff when i was doing them um and so my thing was like well like these are songs, you know, yeah. or are they? Yeah. Or is it like asking the question almost? Like That's maybe. a great question. Yeah. That's a great it's question. like, what's the difference, you know? They and like our songs. They my our fans songs. love those, some of those, yeah. you know, um, and want to listen to them again and again. And so I think like, way earlier on, I was maybe resistant to it because I was like, well, that's my discography. And, um, you know, I guess I had like limiting beliefs around it where it's like, well, I'm an artist and I can't just put a freestyle out on Spotify or whatever. Uh, but then I came around to it and I was like, you know what? Why not? This is interesting. Like, this is kind of exciting. Yeah. And like my my trajectory is so unique anyway. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like who cares about the the rules or the the pre preconceived notions like here you go. Listen to these. Maybe yeah. maybe you guys will like listening to these. And these are the songs, even though I just freestyled them. Uh, but then also, like, uh, sometimes when I'm creating songs, when I say writing, um, I'm not always, like, pulling out a pen and writing. Sometimes I am. But a lot of times I'll just freestyle in the studio um, on the mic and then, uh, you know, piece things together or freestyle until I run out of things to say and then pause and I'll say this and then jump back in. Mm -hmm. So I experiment with a lot of different processes like that. But I feel most comfortable um, improvising in the moment. Yeah. So a lot of times, even when I'm recording and making songs, the best sort of ideas come from that. Yeah. I like what you said about uh, your trajectory being unique. Yeah. Has that been a blessing or a curse? Mm. The fact that there wasn't really anybody down your lane before you that you could kind of look at what they did right or wrong. Yeah. But how do you feel about that? What's your relationship with the fact that you are the lane at this point? Yeah. Um, man, I think it's, it's, uh, I guess both and, and neither, you know, I like, I mean, it just, it is what it is, but it, it comes with benefits and it comes with challenges, you know? So like, um, the reality is like, it's, I think in some ways it's been easier for me to build an audience mm -hmm. online because um, there's not that many people that specialize in off top freestyles, right. you know? And so for me, it was like, well, if I can do that, um, and really do the volume, like really make like a, a, a it's almost like a media production company around me freestyling, you know, then, um, I can do kind of dominate that space, you know? Um, so, so that's helpful, yeah. you know? And yeah. also it's like, you know, not with the negative connotation of the word, but in a way it's a gimmick, you know, right. um, these, these plat, these formats that of the Amigo bars, the format, the gorilla bars format, the getting the words, the doing the songs, you know, um, it's a signature, yeah. you know, yeah. not, not necessarily yeah. a gimmick, Ooh, kind of the same thing though. Right. Like a gimmick is a signature. Um, so it's a recognizable thing and it separates me mm -hmm. and that's helpful, you yeah. know, and I think it's so hard to stand out. You know, there's, there's so many artists making songs in, I guess, like a traditional sense, right? Recording music, releasing EPs, projects, singles, whatever, and, and grinding it out in that space. And um, hats off to all of them because it's such a challenging grind. It's yeah. so hard to stand out. You know, there's like a million songs released on Spotify a day or something like that. That's 
fact check that. That's I'm not the number. That. But That's crazy. I, I would, would not doubt that at all. It's something crazy like that, yeah. you know? And so uh, it's really hard to stand out. And so freestyling is a way in which I've been able to stand out. And that's been really exciting and really rewarding because again, I feel most comfortable when I'm improvising. I've always been an improviser in my heart. You know, I love to make, make shit up. In Did the you moment. do drama at school? Or nah. No? Nah, I always music was my way yeah. of doing it. Yeah. Or just, I would like run around the house and do little skits and do voices and make stuff up, yeah. you know, when I was a kid. So I, I probably could have gotten into it. Yeah. But the cars never fell that way for me. You would have been great at improv. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I do want to get into that now. I would love to take a class go. and do it. Go. Just I think it would be dope to see how the freestyle improv applies to other mediums. Yeah. But um, but yeah, in terms of it being a curse, so to speak, or or I guess the challenges of being like so in my own lane is um, I guess sometimes I feel like an outsider, you know, okay. like um, I'm not as uh, like embraced necessarily um, as like a, you know, like a hip hop artist, right. for example. Right. I'm seeing it's like a very niche thing that I do. Yeah. You know, and it's like, cool, like respect for the niche within the niche. But in terms of being more like broadly appreciated as as part of the conversation, right. um, I always feel like I'm a, a little bit of an outsider. Right. And so that sometimes that's interesting for me because I'm such a fan of hip hop. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so I love hip hop. Accept me, bring me like Sort yeah. of, yeah. And then also like using that as a good exercise to be like, why do I need, you know, why do I need that validation and that acceptance? You don't, at you know, all, you know, because what you're yeah. doing is working. Right. So it's good to sort of have those exercises in life, the things that like the real world challenges yeah. where it's like, hey, are you really about what you say? Mm -hmm. Because I would say to anybody who is asking my advice, you don't need validation. Yeah. You know, you don't need the external validation. If you are into what you're doing, then follow that. Yeah. And so for me, this this is sort of like one of those tests where it's like, well, am I really about that? Like, mm. or do I need to be accepted as a hip hop artist? Right. Or do I need to have the attention of record labels? Do I need to have the traditional things that would be a sign of like, oh, he's making it, he's blowing up as an artist? Do I need those things? And I think, um, you know, that's so that's been the challenge is to is to deal with that. <laughs> you don't need the, you know the eyes of the record labels as you mentioned or you know the the big artists because it's like there hasn't been anyone kind of doing what you've done before right you know they've been freestyle rappers but not in the sense that you've been doing it i think not like the differentiator for me um one of the big ones is the um is doing it in this content space yeah. like the content climate that we live in today um, and figuring out how to do that. Cause shout out like one of my heroes as a freestyler is Supernatural, okay. um, who was doing this, you know, decades before me and made a career freestyling, uh, touring the world and, and uh, opening up for some of the biggest acts and blowing people's minds with freestyle since back then. Mm -hmm. um, Juice, MC Juice is somebody else who was basically a career freestyler, very known as a freestyler. And so there have been other idea, rest in peace, uh, Freestyle Fellowship from LA, you know, um, so yeah, the, I'm not the first off top freestyler by any means. Um, I'm part of a lineage, and I wouldn't be here without you know the, the names that I mentioned. But um, in terms of like figuring out how to um, monetize that, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and and build a business around that, um, and do it in a way where it's sustainable in and of itself, yeah. because the endless challenge of the freestyler is everybody saying that's cool. What are you going to do with it? You know, like the Mitch Hedberg joke. I don't know if you know this joke where they're like, oh, you, um, you're a comedian. Cool. Do you write? Right. He's like, that'd be like if I was like, yo, I'm a chef. Oh, cool. Do you farm? Right. Right. It's like, right, I'm exactly, doing yeah. what I want to be doing, exactly, you know? Exactly. And I'm quite sure that like the people I mentioned, the great freestylers that came before me, some of whom made, made records as well and were successful doing that. But, um, I'm sure they they were uh, loving every moment that they were freestyling. Yeah. But then you get in rooms with like record executives and people like that, and they're like, "That's great, but what what are you gonna do with it?" Right. I e I don't know how to make money off of it. Therefore, it's not that meaningful to me until you convert it to something that I can monetize. Right. That's like the yeah. endless challenge. It's so interesting of yeah. the freestyler, and so I feel that's that's what I'm sort of proud of being able to push forward is like, hey, in this. And I'm very fortunate, by the way, to be born in this time where I have these tools available to me mm -hmm. because the cats that I mentioned didn't have. You couldn't just pick up this phone and, and go live and yeah. do what you do to all these people and build a personal brand. Mm -hmm. The first of its kind. Um, 
you know, and it's what interesting what you're saying about, you know, the labels and the execs, because like I saw that clip from your podcast where you literally said, you know, big wigs would reach out and ask, hey, pivot was the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, AKA, you know, how can we make money off this? How can you ensure longevity, all that? Yeah. When people say that. Yeah. Does it get into your mind or are you just like, I know who I am. I know what I do. Let me be in my thing. On my best days, it's that. It's the latter. But on my worst days, yeah, it gets in my mind sometimes. You know, it has in the past. Like, I have been like, oh, man, like, what am I... Is is this all just, um, you know, uh, is it not serious? You know, like, is it not going to last? Is it not... It do, like, yeah, sometimes I would be like, maybe I do have to pivot. Everyone thinks like that, bro. Everyone, yeah. like, everyone thinks like that in the sense that, like, everyone doubts themselves. Yes. Yeah. Most of the real trailblazers in this industry are people that not didn't listen to it but stuck to their yeah you know to their guns because they believed in what they did yeah um and that shows definitely um, and all this stuff is just the way that it is because some human beings decided that this is how it should be. literally bro you literally. know and i think that's the thing too is it's like well if they pick that then i can pick what you know i can I, I, what makes me so different from the people that yeah. decided that the green light means go and the red light means stop for example that was just right. somebody somebody came up with that yeah could have been two different entirely different colors right. Right. as an example you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so just because somebody says well here's how it works you make a single and it goes to radio and you tour off the success of the single mm -hmm. and you drop that okay that's one path mm -hmm. but here's an alternate path you yeah. know um, yeah i mean you mentioned tours you've been touring yeah uh you've done some huge shows yeah all over the place including your hometown you're here in la yeah um What's that like? I mean, that's wild. From Portland to the studying jazz to YouTube to the big stages. Yeah. Like, what? Dude, it's so dope, man. It's really awesome. I feel so fortunate. And uh, it was cool, too. This last tour, we performed in my, in my hometown in Portland at this venue called Crystal Ballroom. And it's a really special venue for me because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, my first favorite rap group was Black Alicious. Mm -hmm. And the first rap concert I went to when I was 12 years old was at Crystal Ballroom, yeah. Black wow. Alicious. Wow. Uh, first time I ever smelled weed. Never knew what but weed. Was I was it? like, what's that smell? Yeah. yeah like, I remember the first time I smelled weed. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, and it was an amazing show. And, and uh, it was like a life-changing experience to go there when I was 12. Um, and uh, yeah, so we got to go back there and, and, and do the show. It was really, really special. But um, it's been incredible, man. And it's been a fun challenge for me, too. Um, to figure out how to scale off top freestyling to a bigger stage. Yeah. Um, and there's all kinds of crazy stuff we've come up with. And um, I got more ideas too, brewing for future tours yeah. and shows, how to even expand that more and um, bring the magic to a big stage and make it engaging. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I mean, your fans love it, bro. Yeah. You know, like the people that follow you, I feel like are very consistent. Mm. You know, they'll, find you here and then they'll go and follow you on everywhere else yeah they're fans man and they yeah. want to they want to follow the journey and you know as i say my mate was the one that introduced me to you yeah and like they are just when someone introduces you like i've since he's introduced me i've yeah. introduced you to other people yeah and the excitement that people have when they introduce uh, introducing you've got to check out this guy you've <laughs> oh, got yeah. to see this guy yeah do you know what i mean yeah that's awesome is it a trip for you that like totally. people all over the world right now are discovering you for the first time yeah there are probably numerous people around the world right now watching your stuff yeah like, that's a trip like that's only a dream come true you were mentioning millions okay. of songs uploaded to spotify each day i don't know youtube videos are uploaded each day yeah and yours hit yeah wild Dude, it's insane. Oh it's mind blowing. I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, it's really, really crazy. And I just think, you know, like I said, man, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with music. You know, crawling to the speaker, drumming on the high chair. Like I've always had this this rhythm in me, and so I didn't have a choice. I feel like, like I was kind of like born a musician, which sounds crazy, but I really actually believe that. Um, and uh, but you know, that's cool, but it might not have panned out. Right. And I would still just be the musician, yeah. but I wouldn't have an audience and I wouldn't be able to make my living doing it, yeah. you know? And, and that's one way that it could have gone. And I'm just so grateful that it's gone the way that it's gone. And, yeah. and it's never the way you think it's going to happen. Um, it takes its own shape, but uh, it's so dope, man. You can plan all you want, but there's always going to be things that... Amigo, for example. Yeah, COVID. You exactly. had no idea that you were going to have to 
pivot exactly and and end up doing that totally um we've spoken about the original music more of that to come definitely yeah 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 more music coming out um we're really going hard we've released a bunch of singles this year yeah. and we're just going to keep uh putting singles out and splashing uh things out there and seeing what resonates with people um i like to be in kind of like a consistent feedback loop you know yeah. um because that's how I learn and that's how I grow and get comfortable. Yeah. Um, freestyling is like a micro version of that. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm freestyling, if I do a certain thing and it gets a reaction, I'm like, okay, cool. This is the thing. Yeah. Um, and releasing songs is sort of, uh, I'm, I'm playing with that as well, just by dropping songs consistently and seeing what the audience is resonating with. All right. Cause I was going to ask like, with followers comes comments and yeah. critiques and yeah. praise and all of the everything. Yeah. Um, are you taking that into account? Like, are you seeing feedback? Are you seeing the yeses, the noes? The, and, and, and does that impact your work at all? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I mean, I've had, a, like all creators, I assume, I've had a journey with that, you know, in terms of like how to manage that um, in a way that's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, like I stay apprised sort of to what the, audience is on in a sense like i'll read comments you know like on youtube I, some people are like don't read any of the comments which totally respect that as well that's a great way of doing it you know um just like don't even listen to the noise but i feel like um what i've built is sort of a community thing you know especially like building through covid it's really community oriented and, yeah, and it's always been so. about that yeah and it's a lot of people like you say that have been on board for my journey from the beginning who are kind of like watching me blossom and stuff like that and and watching me evolve and so I just like to at least know where they're at yeah. uh, and get sort of like a temperature read. Yeah. And it does, I think, inform me just um, it's useful information. But I think where it becomes problematic is when you are reactive to it and then like change what you're doing because of what no, was said. Absolutely. That's where I think it's important to not get caught up in it. Um, so like I like to know I don't like to be blind to it. But then if it's like, oh, this song is not it or whatever. But I know that for me, this is the type of music that I'm feeling right now. Then I wouldn't want to just like cut that off because part of the audience doesn't like it. Right. You know, are you always listening to music when it comes out? Like, are you always like, who's the next wave? What are people doing? How are people sounding? You know? Yeah. Like, no, no, not, I'm not. No, I'm always listening to music, but not the wave. I, I like to, um, there is this element of like, if I don't discover, feel like I'm coming to something on my own timeline. Um, when it makes sense for me, then it's less meaningful to me. Right. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And uh, anything I learn or have to figure out, for me, it's less helpful for someone to say, here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Now do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then like six months later, I'm like, I need to know how to do this right. thing. Yeah. And then yeah, I'll start exactly. figuring it out myself. Mm -hmm. And it's much messier, but it's meaningful to me, you right. know? And then my way of now knowing how to do that thing, uh, it means something to me. So it's similar for music. I'm like, when I'm like, I want to check this out now. I want to see what this is about. Yeah. yeah. Then I, I open up the box to it. But a lot of what I listen to is is older um, music. Like right. I really love like 90s um, hip hop. It's timeless. Yeah. It's timeless. Um, I mean, to wrap up, like, what do you want to be known for? What's the What's the legacy? Wow. Sorry, I know it's a big one. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a great question. It's something I should be should be thinking about more. I think I would want, um, well, I would want part of it maybe to be that um, you don't have to go the traditional path. Right. Um, I think that like, if I can in some way break a, break a door open for other like people like me who just really love to improvise mm -hmm. and be like, hey, this, this is also valuable in and of itself, yeah. you know, and um, there are ways to do it and, and make it work as, as its own thing. Uh, and then it's not lesser than, you know what right. I mean? Yeah. Um, to get that message out. Um, that I think would be really important. And, uh, you know, honestly, I just want to push freestyling to, to, to new limits, man. Like I, yeah. I do. I think that that to me is very exciting. Mm -hmm. Like um, what, what, what's the craziest thing you can imagine being done by, a, by a freestyle improviser, you know, like a concept album, you know, in right. front of people live right. on a stage based right. on input from the audience. Like, the fucking David Copperfield version of yeah, it, you know, if, right, yeah. if freestyling is usually sleight of hand for a circle of eight people on the street corner, what's the Copperfield yeah, version? Right. How, how do I right. make the, um, how do I make the Statue of Liberty disappear right. on national right. television? Right. You know, right. like, let me do that off right. the top of the dome. And then hopefully, um, 
not just so I can do it, but but to maybe like break through, uh, you know, the, the limits for the future generation of freestylers, because, you know, I was 12 years old getting my mind blown by Super Nat. Somebody is is 10, 11 years old watching my videos. And oh, yeah. I can only imagine that they're they're going to be doing some shit that I can't even comprehend, you know, by the time they're they're my age and beyond. So that's the goal, man. Yeah, that's the goal. That's what we want to do. You want to inspire. You want to pass the baton when it's time. And um you know, be a trailblazer in in the path. So, yeah. well done. Thank you, man. Congrats, man. It's really appreciate cool. it, bro. I appreciate it so much. It's oh, my, my pleasure. Such a pleasure to sit down oh, with you. Likewise, um, man. Great this, to meet you. This man. isn't the the end of the journey, man. There's a lot more to come, and we can't wait to see where it takes you. Hey, appreciate baby, that, bro. Thanks, bro. What? Hell yeah. What? 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 Look, come up the top of the mental whenever I'm rhyming, I throw down. Yeah. On the mic, oh, they all oh, give up. Yeah. He's nice off the top. I'm grading your eyes, but you grade mine because you inspire me. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause a catastrophe. What? Uh, every time I rhyme, it's from the purest brain. I'm about Yo, to that was, like volcano, but that was an A. Yeah, catastrophic every time I rap with logic. Right. And I'm about to force these other whack cats to back off. Listen, and y'all know I get mean with raps. I make you laugh, cover your forehead, then lean on back. Can't believe what's happening. I'm rapping in a whole nother language Rappers, I fill them with anguish You know I back up my claims When I throw it down, I be flaming Just like the wick of the candle I hit your toes when the sandals with the anvils Mag off the time, going down for my peaks Have every time that I rhyme off the tip of the mental I'm going in deep, what's good? Much love everybody, my name is Harry Mack Known for all the way live, off top Fully improvised freestyle raps